Yes, no, ma'am. Shalom, everyone. This is Brother Doug with the Awakened by Yahuwah Fellowship Group. We are going to be starting with Isaiah chapter 7 today. And I will be reading. I will be reading from my New Living Translation Study Bible. Um, many of us have different translations we read from. It's not a big deal. Um, so just in case whoever's listening on this recording, just, just a forewarning. All right, here we go. Chapter 7 of Isaiah, Yasha Yahu. When Ahaz, son of Yotham, and grandson of Uziyahu, was king of Yahuda, king Rezin of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, the king of Yashra'al, set out to attack Jerusalem, or Yerushalayim. However, they were unable to carry out their plan. The news had come to the royal court of Yehuda. Syria is allied with Yashra'al against us. So the hearts of the king and his people trembled with fear, like trees shaking in a storm. Then Yahuwah said to Yashayahu, Take your son, Shear Yashub, and go out to meet King Ahaz. You will find him at the end of the aqueduct that feeds water into the upper pool, near the road leading to the field where cloth is washed. Tell him to stop worrying. Tell him he doesn't need to fear the fierce anger of those who burned out embers, King Rezin of Syria and Pekah, son of Ramalia. Yes, the kings of Syria and Yashra'ah are plotting against him, saying, we will attack Yahuda and capture it for ourselves. Then we will install the son of Tabiel as Yahuda's king. But this is what the sovereign Yahuwah says. This invasion will never happen. It will never take place. For Syria is no stronger than its capital, Damascus. And Damascus is no stronger than its king, Rezin. As for Yashra'al, Within 65 years, it will be crushed and completely destroyed. Yashra'al is no stronger than its capital, Samaria. And Samaria is no stronger than its king, Pekah, son of Ramalia. Unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. Later, Yahuwah sent his message to King Ahaz, Ask Yahuwah, your Elohim, for a sign of confirmation. Ahaz, make it as difficult as you want, as high as heaven, or as deep as the place of the dead. But the king refused no. He said, I will not test Yahuwah like that. Then Yashayahu said, Listen well, you royal family of David. Isn't it enough to exhaust human patience? Must you exhaust the patience of my Elohim as well? All right, then. Yahuwah himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means Elohim, or if you prefer, Elohim, is with us. By the time this child is old enough, to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he will be eating yogurt and honey. For before the child is that old, the lands of the two kings you fear so much will both be deserted. Then Yahuwah will bring things on you, your nation, and your family unlike anything. Since Yashra'al broke away from Yahuda, he will bring the king of Assyria upon you, in that day, Yahuwah will whistle for the army of southern Egypt and for the army of Assyria. They will swarm around you like the flies and bees. They will come in vast hordes and settle in the fertile areas and also in the desolate valleys, caves, and thorny places. In that day, Yahuwah will hire a razor from beyond the Euphrates River. The king of Assyria and use it to shave off everything, shave off everything, your land, your crops, and your people. Verse 21, in that day, a farmer will be fortunate to have a cow and two sheep or goats left. Nevertheless, 
there will be enough milk for everyone because so few people will be left in the land. They will eat their fill of yogurt and honey in that day. The lush vineyards, now worth a thousand pieces of silver, will become patches of briars and thorns. The entire land will become a vast expanse of briars and thorns, a hunting ground overrun by wildlife. No one will go to the fertile hillsides where the gardens once grew, for briars and thorns will cover them. Cattle, sheep, and goats will graze there. And that is the end of Isaiah chapter 7. I find it interesting, just real quick, before I mute myself, um, that it seems like this is a prelude to the Assyrian captivity of the northern house. So I just wanted to say that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is also talking about the Messiah coming also. You know, this is a big chapter here. It tells you about the Messiah coming coming from a virgin in 714. So this is proof positive that Messiah was coming and it wasn't going to be past this day, it was way before this, because they're talking about the Assyrian captivity and everything. Hallelujah. Am I unmuted? Okay. I, I see it as prophecy as um, for, for the end times uh, because the king of Asher was Nimrod and I, I don't know how many people listen to Rob Skiba, but he pretty well has proven that Nimrod is the beast that's going to rise up out of the bottomless pit. And um, I see this as what, what Yahuwah is going to do to this king of Asher, which is Nimrod. Just for confirmation, Shoshana, um, I agree with you because the Assyrian is um, a lot of Bible scholars, even Christian scholars agree. The Assyrian, when that title is being used, is referring to this conquering anti-Messiah king spoken of in Daniel, I think it's chapter 4. Um, so even Christians understand that. They understand that it's a title given to the end times anti-Messiah. And um, in my translation, it actually says verbatim in that day, some of this is happening. So a lot of times when I read prophecy, I look for in that day or in the latter days, some translations will say, because that's specifically talking about the end times. So that's usually terminology I look for when I'm trying to figure out, is this uh, a first fulfillment, double fulfillment, triple fulfillment. Sometimes prophecies have double fulfillments. Like Bobby brought up 714. That might have been partially fulfilled at that time, but I believe it was also a dual, prophe a dual prophecy that Yahusha fully fulfilled it, being the fulfillment of Yahuwah, Elohim, dwelling with us, living with us, among us. So I just wanted to say that. Spell this in the end when he takes uh, the Assyrian, Nimrod, and um, it looks like he's going to shave all his hair off before he throws him in the lake of fire. <laughs> Want to add to that, d -Rail? Uh... Uh, <laughs> what I got, I mean, I don't know, man. This has been going in my mind lately. The the name, 714. Uh-huh. Okay. You know, he, he said his name, he called Emmanuel. Now, I don't see any uh, scripture with the saying Yahusha. I always see Emmanuel. Well, that's not true because in the New Testament, it does say, call him Yahushua or call him Yahushua right. because he will save his he will save his people from their sins. 
So Gabriel actually does tell Miriam to call him Yahusha. What, what so, verse? Uh, let me see. I think it's one of the Gospels, either in Luke. Um, let's see. Call him. Hold on. I'm going to get this really quick. But it also says, I will give you a sign. I believe in context, it's not saying that his name is going to be Man Emmanuel, but it's a sign. That you who is gonna dwell with us. Let's see, I'm gonna get this verse real quick. Uh, okay, um, he will save his people from their sins. I believe it's Gabriel talking, the angel that talks to Miriam. Um, yeah. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 is the verse, and I'll just read it real quick. I'll be using the restored name King James for this one. And uh, right here. And Matthew she, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahusha, for he shall save his people from their sins. And um, the verse before it talks about, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Yosef, you, son of David, fear not to take unto thou Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the set-apart spirit. So because Joseph was about to divorce her, put her away, because she's pregnant, he's like, wait a minute, I didn't even come into you. Why are you pregnant? So he, he was actually about to put her away in private, and the angel of Yahuwah, which many people believe is Gabriel, is saying to him, don't be, don't be afraid. She's conceived from Yahuwah's spirit, the Holy Spirit. So you know, scriptures like King James, of course, it says Jesus, and we were tricked for a very long time to think that was his name. You see what I'm getting at? Girls will, will have Yahusha um, or Yahushua in that verse, I'm pretty sure, if they have the New Testament. Is that Jesus was obviously a mistranslation. You can actually prove that in Zechariah chapter 6, verse 11 to 12. Right. Because that prophecy is about Yahushua. It actually says, um, bring forth before me Yahushua, um, Joshua, um, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. And put a crown on him, and thus his name is the is the branch, meaning his, his name is the name of the Messiah. The branch the branch is a title for Messiah, and so we know that Yahusha, son of Yehozadak, was used um, figuratively or metaphorically as the forecoming Messiah. So we know for a fact it can't be Jesus. Because he's even saying his name is the branch. So you know from Zechariah chapter 6, 11, 12, what the name of Messiah is supposed to be. Yeah, I don't argue. I know it's not Jesus. No, I just want to explain the whole Emmanuel thing because many people have um, gone astray and started saying Emmanuel is his name. But the verse actually says, I shall give you a sign. It's a sign. It's a it's it's a way to let people know that this this is the sign that Yahuwah is going to dwell with us, and that because it says the name means Elohim with us. El with us. Uh, so. And it says, and she'll call his name Emmanuel. I I know, but. It's he's he says before that if you read the whole verse in context, he's saying, I will give you a sign. He's not saying that his name is Emmanuel, he's saying, I shall give you a sign, and his name shall be Emmanuel. It's it's more of it's more of a sign that the uh, of the prophecy, it's not saying that to name the Messiah Emmanuel because that would, that would contradict what the gospels are saying. And Yahuwah doesn't change. Like he he get 
he gave he gave the Messiah the branch, the name of Joshua, Yahusha, and Zacharias, so he wouldn't be contradicting himself and um, giving the name of Manuel. I mean, that's that's what I believe. He's saying his name is the branch in Zechariah 6, 11, and 12, specifically talking about the Messiah, and most Christian theologians even admit that, that Zechariah 6, 11, and 12 is talking about Yahusha. Um, so they they even admit that his name really is, in modern English, Joshua. So, I mean, I, I think the evidence is there that Yahusha is definitely his name. I think Emmanuel is more of a more of a... I would say title or or a sign uh, that it that this is what's supposed to be fulfilled by the Messiah. That it's more of a sign than really an actual name. Like I don't believe his name was to be Emmanuel. Wait, Sam, did you want to say something? I just had a small thing to mention here in the scriptures, 2009, the verse goes, and she shall give birth to his son and you, and you shall call his name Yahusha, for he shall save his people from their sins. There's a footnote here that says he shall save. This is the meaning of the Hebrew of his name. So I just, you know, I just found that interesting because I thought we came to the conclusion that, um, you know, Yahusha means Yahuwah is salvation, but here, in the scriptures 2009 they're saying he shall save is the, the meaning of his name so that's that's all yeah it depends on the vowel points it depends on what their beliefs are on the uh pronunciation because you you can look up in blue letter bible in the concordance depending on what vowel points they use it can it can go from yahuwah saves to and you change it to yeshua means he is saved, which is a little weird. What does Yahushua have to be saved from? That's why I was never a big fan of Yeshua. Um, yeah, so it depends, Sam, on the vowel points. That That's why some translators will say it means he he saves. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, it's not a big deal to me. I mean, Yahuwah saves, he saves. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing. But d depending on the vowel points, that's where it gets funny with what the name means because you, you add a couple of vowel points, it changes the whole meaning of the name. So that, that's why I believe the name should have stuck in the Paleo-Hebrew. We shouldn't be having modern Hebrew for yod heh wad -Hey. You know, it should have been what it originally was, like on derail shirt. That should be where you see the modern Hebrew in the ISR. That's just, that's just my opinion. Sounds good, definitely. Yeah, I agree with you, Doug. I totally agree. Um, so move on to eight. Anybody else got anything else to share about this chapter or? All right. Shushana, you have something you would like to say? Uh, a sideline, it, it's more on the, um, from Zechariah. Uh, which Doug brought out, um, reading on, it says he's, it is he, in verse 13, who is going to build the heckle of Yahuwah. It is he who is going to bear the splendor, and he shall sit and rule on his throne, and shall be a Kohen on his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And, um, to me, uh, what I'm what I'm seeing here is that the temple being built at the end of this age is not no. Yahuwah's. This temple is for the anti Messiah, but Yahusha will build the temple when he sets up the kingdom, the true temple. Doug, did you have something you wanted to say? No. Nope. Nope. I what's uh Doug, what was Zechariah? What um it was Zechariah, I she was reading from six thirteen, but the one I cited from was Zechariah chapter six, eleven to twelve is where it talks about um his name. Okay. Um and let me just read that real quick. Um Zechariah 
chapter 6, verse, verse 11 to 12. Let me just see. Why am I having such a hard time to find Zechariah? Um, oh, there we go. Man, my eyes are just bad. Bear with me. My eyes are just really bad the way they cite this stuff on the app. All right, it says, Zechariah chapter 6, 11 and 12. Then take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of Yahusha, the son of Yahozadak, the high priest, and speak unto him, saying, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts. Thus speak Yahuwah of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Yahuwah. And the reason we know the branch is Yahusha because there's a prophecy talking about the root of Jesse is also another name for Yahusha. It's also another title for him. He is the root of Jesse, the offspring of Jesse. There's also a cross reference on that to Zechariah 3 8. He says, now listen, Yehoshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are men of symbol. For look, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch, footnote, or sprout. So I guess maybe in that verse, they were stating him as Emmanuel. Now they're calling him the branch. You know, Emmanuel stating son of the virgin. You know what I'm saying? And now they're calling him the branch also. So this could all be prophetical names. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Because obviously now they're calling the Messiah the branch. You know what I'm saying? Is his yeah. name branch? <laughs> you know, but was he virgin? You know what I'm saying? So I think it's all accumulative. I guess. I yeah, they're all titles. I believe they're all they're all titles referring to Yahusha. And um, uh, the reason I brought up Zechariah six eleven to twelve is because it's he's he's mentioning Yahusha, son of Yehozadak, the high priest, by name, saying his name is the branch, meaning the name Yahusha is the branch, like one and the same. So. That's why I believe that that's the prophetic um, name of the Messiah, and we're given it in the book of Zechariah. So you say, you talk about Yahushua, and uh, his it's name the is the branch. Yeah, his name, Yahushua, is the branch. So it's kind of like a wink, wink, this is his name kind of thing. Yeah. Like a hint. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge hint. We miss it our whole walks in Christianity. It's right there in the Old Testament. I miss the whole Old Testament in Christianity. Yeah, <laughs> same here. Was yeah, they pronounce it Yahusha. So why do they say Yahushua? <laughs> Not well, sure. And it said that both names are in the Dead Sea Scrolls as well yep i haven't got there yet but i'm sure i'll find it yeah yeah myself i'm looking for it too i just i wasn't trying to like be all controversial no i just wanted to wonder why they said emmanuel twice and then like why doesn't anybody call him emmanuel very good question no yeah, if you don't question. point that out then that would be bad also you know what i'm saying not controversy. We gotta try to figure this out. Yeah, and you want to have the understanding. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stupid question. I think definitely this might entail like a special yeah. study just in this. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe it's like the Hispanic man. He's got a bunch of names. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he does have yeah, a like an like an example is El Shaddai is a title. It's right. not Yahuwah's name. But where is it in, I, in Isaiah as well, where it says all his other names, the one that is to come? There's a bunch of different names. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, the, um, the Almighty, 
Almighty. He's, he's also called, you know, the Most High. The Most yeah. High is not his name, even though some people in our faith. So it's a title. Pretty much Emmanuel. Right? Emmanuel is a title then. Yeah, Emmanuel, I believe, was a metaphoric prophetic title to the Messiah to let us know this is what we should be looking for. That uh, um, one born of a virgin. Um, you he know, was with he, us, so that means he was he was. Yahuwah was with us. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a debate within this group, but I believe that's a sign that, yeah. the, that the Son is the Father. Because that, that's literally saying Yahuwah is dwelling with us in that time of him being born. Yeah. So that, that, that's the reason I believe what I believe. I don't try to like push it on anyone, but that's why I believe what I believe. Now you one, said earlier, you said earlier, you said that there are people actually calling him Manuel going, yeah, there there's been people that left our group because we sure. we we use the name Yahusha instead of Manuel, uh, and they they've watched YouTube videos and stuff like that and say, oh, his name is Emmanuel. See, his name is Emmanuel. Well, why doesn't he say, I'll give you a sign that you know you gotta read the whole verse. You got you can't right. just take right. bits and pieces out and be like, oh, it's his name. Well, read the rest of the verse. That, that it's obviously a metaphor, a sign, a thing to look out for. It's, oh, I it's found it. Yeah. Oh, we got. We haven't gotten here yet. We'll get there. We'll stop <laughs> talking about it, and then we'll get to all the different names where it says in nine six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like Elohim. Elohim's a title too. Yahuwah says, "I am your Elohim." He's not saying that Elohim's his name. Yeah. I, no, I'm. I'm on the. I'm on that page. I just had a question it though. No, it's all good. It's all good, bud. I think Dennis would like to say something. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Dennis. Oh yeah. Uh you can look in the uh, Exodus twenty-three, twenty and twenty-one, where he states, uh, I'm sending you a messenger, it's capital M. He will not uh pardon your sins for my name is in his name. And it tells you basically Yahuwah and Yahusha. My name is in his name. Yeah. It's Shema 23, 20, 21. Yep, and I believe the uh, actual word should be Malachim, right? In context, probably there, Malachim angel. I'm saying my angel in your way. I, I know some restored translations. Um, you know, they just put general messenger in there, which I'm kind of not a big fan of. Yeah. It's kind of confusing. Just in my opinion. I don't, I don't like that. It, yeah, it that's, that. that's what got me to, to realize the real name to started me in this walk was those verses in scripture, to be honest with you. So hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. Speaking his name. That's how I found out that the Torah is very much alive. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dennis, you got anything else? Yeah. Just that they, I, I agree. The Emmanuel Counselor, uh, all these are, are titles. <clears throat> They're titles for, the, for Yosha. The, the burden of the world is on his shoulders. Hallelujah. That's comforting to know. (laughs) Yes. Thank you. I'll read next if anybody's everybody's done. I'm good. You're up then. All right. All right. Chapter eight. I'm reading from the ISR. Yesha Yahoo eight. And Yahuwah said to me. Take a large tablet and write on it with a man's pen concerning Maher Shalal Ash Baz. And let me take reliable witnesses to re- record Uriah, the priest, and Zechariah, son of Yebarak Yahu. And I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. And Yahuwah said to me, Call his name Maher Shalal Ash Baz. Verse 4, for before the child knows to cry, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Shemaron is taken away 
before the sovereign of Ashur. And Yahuwah spoke to me again, saying, <clears throat> Inasmuch as these people refuse the waters of Chiloa that flow swift, softly and rejoice in Retzin and in Ramaliahu's son, now therefore see Yahuwah brings up over them the waters of the river, strong and mighty, the sovereign of Ashur and all his esteem. And he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Yehuda. He shall overflow and pass over, reaching up to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. Nine, be shattered, O you peoples, and be broken in pieces. Give ear, all you, from the place, far places of the earth. Gird yourselves, but be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, but be broken in pieces. Take counsel, and, and it comes to not. Speak a word, and it does not stand. For El is with us. For Yahuwah spoke this to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Verse 13. Yahushua of hosts, him you shall set apart. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. <clears throat> now I want to, can I say something on that? These verses I just read? Yes, please. Uh, what was it verse through 11, all the way to 13, pretty much? Um, it kind of made me think of like, you know, nowadays how everybody's getting all involved with these, you know, like things are going on in the world and. To me, it's like, you know, don't fear those things. You know, fear Yahuwah, your Elohim, you know, um, cut, seek him. And, you know, it's pretty much like say, don't trip. Don't worry about it. Just fear Yahuwah. That's it. Not... Hallelujah. A lot of distractions out there, brother, and that's what we got to pay attention for. Yeah. Would that be right, though? Would that mean, like, what I just, that, that's what I got out of that reading that. Well, I think in context, it's saying, though, it's saying that um, don't think everything's a conspiracy that they're calling a conspiracy. So okay. it's more of don't get so crazy to the point you think everything's a conspiracy that people are claiming is a conspiracy. I think that's what the verse is actually saying. Right. Yeah. All right. Verse 14. And he shall be for a set apart place, but a stone of stumbling and a rock that makes you for falling to both the house of Yisrael as a trap and snare to the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and snared and taken. Bind up the witness, seal the Torah among my taught ones. And I shall wait on Yahuwah who hides his face from the house of Yaakov, and I shall look for him. Look, I and the children whom Yahuwah has given me for signs and wonders in Yisrael from Yahuwah of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. And when you say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards who whispered and muttered, should not a people seek their Elohim? Exactly. Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? 20. To the Torah and to the witness. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no daybreak. And they shall pass through it hard pressed and hungry. And it shall be when they are hungry that they shall be wroth and curse their sovereign and their Elohim looking upward. 22. And they shall look to the earth and see distress and darkness, gloom of hard times, and be driven into thick darkness. And that is the end. And I'm going to say something about the mediums. <clears throat> yes, actually, I think it's today that here in town, they got medium, this lady, she's like a medium or something. And so she talks to the dead, quote unquote. And it was on. Facebook, you know, for people in town, you know, they want to go. So, so I put a bunch of scripture verses in there. And uh, yeah, I got erased. <laughs> Hallelujah. But someone saw it. At least you know that. Someone saw yeah, it. Yeah, but, but what it made, it made, it, it, it made me see all the hypocrisy too, because, or the, not hypocrisy, but the, uh, the lost sheep, let me say it that way. Because there are a lot more, like I look at some of the, and there's a lot of women, I'm not trying to say, but a lot of women that fall for that. There were a few men, but it seemed like there were more women in there. And some of them were uh, Christian, you know, playing, you know, they go to church and all that. And here they are going to see a medium. 
And yes. so when I post these scriptures, I'm hoping I can reach their heart. You know what I mean? Yeah, and perhaps it will. Yeah, and yeah. remember back in the garden, it was Eve. You know, yeah. the women are the weaker vessels. And it, it does show. It does show when, when you see in the world. And uh, I'm a woman, and I can, I can definitely attest to that being a truth. They're very vulnerable when it comes to that. Yes. Yes, and Hashatan uses that to his advantage. Yep. And, um, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very sad that people, uh, they turn their ears to doctrines of demons. And I know. just want to so badly go over there where it is right now with my scripture and just start reading the words help, real loud. <laughs> just, just totally like. Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, would that be working? <laughs> <laughs> but they erase it, you know, because it's not what they want to hear. They they want. Oh, I'm talking about going over there and disturbing them. That's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Probably go to jail though. Thanks, d -Rail. Go ahead, Doug. Um, 14 to 15. Those verses really spoke to me because this is talking about Yahusha. He would become a stumbling block to the two houses, to Judah and Israel. And um, I think in the book of Romans, Paul talks about um, a partial stumbling has come upon Israel. Yahuwah will not forget his people forever, but a partial stumbling. So Yahushua is that cornerstone in the book of Psalms yeah. that the builders rejected. And the builders will... You know, you can refer them to the Freemasons, but you can also refer them in Yahusha's time to the Pharisees, to the Yahudim who were in the land. They were also the builders that rejected the chief cornerstone. That's great, Doug. Thank you. Great. Nice catch. Anyone else have anything they want to share? Who would like to read next? Wait, wait, wait. I think oh. we're going to start over again. So I'm going to stop recording. Yeah.